So what actually is a glacier? Well, on its basic level, it's a block of ice occupying a valley. However, due to its size and mass, certain unusual factors occur, and some that are just a little bit unexpected. Well, gravity pulls on the ice, pulling it slowly down the slope, either towards an ocean or a lake or another large water source. And the speed at which the ice moves depends upon various factors, such as the angle of the slope it's travelling along, the depth of the ice, and the type of the particular rock surface it's moving across, and most critically, the temperature. Now, this isn't to say that all of the ice moves as a single piece. If the ice is greater than 50 metres thick, different layers of the ice will actually be moving faster than others as they slide past each other. Now, in general, the further away the ice is from the friction between the ice and the rock surface, the faster that part of the ice will actually travel. And friction is generally the force holding the glacier in check. Now, as the temperature rises, it creates what's known as basal sliding, where the meltwater from the ice acts to reduce the amount of friction. This water can also be absorbed by the surface of the rock or the soil, again acting as a lubricant, easing the passage of the ice down the slope. This does mean that as a glacier gradually makes its way down the slope, it is continually making the valley it passes down deeper and wider as it erodes the base of the valley and the valley walls as it moves along. So generally the speed at which the glacier moves down the slope increases in summer or in warmer temperatures and decreases or may even stop completely in winter. Now at the front of the glacier, as it nears the water, parts of the glacier may break off called carving, where the ice then floats away in the form of icebergs. Or a combination of melting and erosion and wave action may actually remove the ice from the front end of the glacier. Now if this happens at a faster rate than extra ice is being deposited at the top of the glacier, then pushed down the valley, the glacier is then said to be in retreat, where the gap between the shoreline and the front of the glacier increases. If not, the glacier can actually increase in there and actually covers and actually spreads out across the water. So when you put all this together, what it does mean is there are a lot of factors governing the total area that the glacier actually is covering. And as such, it's a rather poor measure of whether global warming is actually having an effect on the glaciers themselves. The best indicator we actually have for the impact on glaciers isn't the area they cover, but actually the volume of the ice. Well, this has less visual impact than shrinking or expanding areas of ice, and it's also substantially more difficult to measure. So that's glaciers, just a quick introduction.